there. Remember those audio clips you shared from Bar Camp Philly? The ones about community engagement and democracy? Let's dive into those. Absolutely. Those Bar Camp clips are fascinating. It's like this space designed for open exchange becomes a microcosm for these big questions about civic participation. Right. And our speaker, Tony, jumps right in with Robert Putnam's Bowling Alone. You know that book. Yeah, I think most people who've thought about community have at least heard of it. Well, I remember reading it and I felt a little personally attacked because honestly, I haven't joined a bowling league in years. But Tony uses bowling alone to frame bar camp as this kind of counter trend, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, it's a clever way to start the conversation. Putnam's argument, for those who haven't read the book, is basically that the decline of social capital you know, those shared norms and networks of trust that we build by interacting with each other, when those decline, it actually threatens the very foundation of a healthy democracy. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty bold claim. So fewer bowling leagues, fewer PTA meetings, that equals a weaker democracy. Well, Putnam would say it's less about the bowling itself and more about what those activities represent. It's about spaces where people from all walks of life come together, build relationships, and learn to work towards common goals. When those spaces erode, so does our capacity for collective action. Okay, that makes sense. But here's where it gets really interesting. Tony drops this statistic, and I want you to really listen to this one. He says that just by joining one group, any group, you cut your chances of dying in the next year in Hey Cal F. Yeah, that's the part that always makes me stop and think. It highlights just how fundamental social connection is to our well-being, even our physical health. It's like we are wired for community, even if modern life makes us forget that sometimes. And that's where bar camp comes in, right? Forget the treadmill. Let's go to bar camp and maybe add a few years to our lives. Well, maybe not directly, but you're picking up on Tony's point. Bar camp, with its open participation and self-organized sessions, it's kind of an antidote to that bowling alone syndrome. It's a space where you can form connections organically around shared interests and maybe rebuild some of that social fabric that Putin worries we're losing. And the story of how Bar Camp got started, it sounds like an act of democratic rebellion itself. Definitely a story worth telling. So picture this. San Francisco, early 2000s, the tech boom, it's in full swing. Right, dot coms everywhere. Exactly. And amidst all of that, there's this exclusive tech conference, but it's a little too exclusive. The velvet rope of the tech world. Exactly. And a bunch of techies, they're feeling the FOMO, the frustration of being left out. So they decide, hey, let's just start our own thing. And boom, Bar Camp is born like the ultimate we'll do it live moment. They throw open the doors, no agenda, anyone can speak, and suddenly it's a movement. What's so cool is how this model, which comes right out of the tech world, translates to all these other interests, all these other communities. Tony even mentions the Silent Book Club. Okay, I'll admit, when I first heard Silent Book Club, I thought it was a joke. I did too. It seems counterintuitive, right? But then I thought, you know, I kind of love that idea. No pressure to finish the book, no arguing about the ending, just this shared love of reading. Exactly. It really speaks to this human need, this desire for connection, without all the pressure, without having to perform or conform to some idea. And that low barrier to entry, I think that's key to Tony's whole open sourcing community thing. Which, by the way, I'm glad you brought that up because I was dying to unpack that phrase, open source community. What does that actually look like? I think it's about making those tools, those resources for building community, making them accessible to everyone. Okay, I see where you're going with this. It's like open source software. Right. The code is out there. Yeah. Anyone can use it, modify it, share it. Tony's applying that same idea to community building. So instead of gatekeeping community, you're sharing the blueprint. I like that. Exactly. And he gives these concrete examples from his own life, like the new to town meetup he organized. You said you wanted to connect with people in your area. Imagine a platform where anyone new to your town could easily find those kinds of gatherings. That's brilliant. It reminds me of something else Tony talked about. Those old city directories, the kind that used to list every club and organization. They sound kind of quaint now, but I bet they were so valuable for building community, just knowing what's out there, who to contact, where to go to find people who share your interests. Right. Their disappearance in our digital world, it says something about how hard it is to navigate community now. It's weird, right? <laughs> you think with all this tech, it would be easier, but we're online so much, it's almost like we've forgotten how to do it in person. It's true. So what does Tony do? He decides to create this modern day version a People's Guide to Norwalk. Totally open source. Anyone can contribute. I love that he's not just diagnosing the problem. He's out there building solutions. 
And he emphasizes that it doesn't have to be this huge undertaking to be impactful. Mm. He tells this amazing story about his uncle who ends up volunteering for like 20 years at Give Kids the World. Give Kids the World. It's this incredible organization that grants wishes for kids with life-threatening illnesses. And how did Tony's uncle get involved? A coworker casually invited him to come help out one weekend. Oh, wow. Talk about a life-changing invitation. Right. And it shows how powerful those small invitations can be. We underestimate how much people crave connection, how much a simple gesture can open up these whole new worlds. So later in the talk, Tony says, and I might be paraphrasing a bit here, but he says something like, I guarantee there's someone in this room right now doing something that someone else in this room doesn't know about. And wouldn't it be awesome if that first person invited the second person to get involved? It's so true. It's like such a simple idea just sharing our passions, our projects, our own little pockets of community, that's what can make a difference. You know, we were talking about community revitalizing democracy. Tony's whole experience with Bar Camp, it's like a perfect example of that. It's that ground up approach, that spirit of let's just do this that can be so powerful. And then it gets even more meta when he starts talking about open sourcing the open source. I was like, wait, what? At first I thought it was a little much. Yeah, it's one of those things you have to hear him explain. But the more I thought about it, I realized he's onto something. He's basically saying, look, this community building thing, it shouldn't be a mystery. We should make it even easier for people to start their own bar camps, their own silent book clubs, whatever they're passionate about. Exactly. Like, imagine if there were templates, toolkits, a shared space online where you could find all the best practices, case studies, you name it. Kind of like a community leader's body of knowledge. That's a fantastic idea because someone in the audio actually brought up a really important point. They're like, hey, not everyone has access to these physical spaces, these community centers or whatever, to host gatherings. And they're right, it's a real barrier. Especially now when it's so easy to just default to connecting online. Yeah, we have to be intentional about those real world connections. And then there's that whole other challenge of reaching beyond you know, the people who are already showing up at unconferences on a Saturday morning. How do we make this relevant to folks who might not even know where to start? That is the million dollar question. How do we make community building feel accessible and relevant to everyone, not just the enthusiasts? I don't know if there's one easy answer, but I do think it starts with those small acts of invitation like we were talking about before. Those everyday moments where we can create these little micro connections. Like just striking up a conversation with someone new. Exactly. Or organizing a neighborhood potluck or volunteering at a local school. Even putting down our phones and looking up, actually engaging with the people around us. Which, let's be honest, is something we all struggle with. Oh, for sure. But the point is, these little things, these seemingly insignificant interactions, they matter. They build trust. They create the sense of belonging. They literally strengthen our communities. So here's my big takeaway, and it's a question for everyone listening. What if we thought about American democracy like it's an open source project? It's constantly being written and rewritten by us, the citizens. I love that analogy. So the question is, what line of code are you going to write? Maybe it's that invitation to coffee, that act of kindness to a stranger, that moment of genuine connection. Whatever it is, let's make it count. Until next time, keep those deep thoughts brewing. And remember, community isn't just something we find. It's something we build together.